Right now, for Nutrient Equine, I am catching up with Ian Laurie. Firstly, Ian, welcome to Campbell's Comments. Thanks, Paul. You're one of the, um, people aren't aware, you're one of the six trainers that's been involved and been asked to get involved with this, uh, the rehoming of the standard breads at the 2022 Classic Camp Draft, which has uh, been conducted by Nutrient Equine, along with um, New South Wales Harness Racing Industry and the standard bread rehoming um, and, and the getting behind it, Amy Cupid and those. Um, Mark Barton, who I, I, it's his 55th birthday today, so as I said, congratulations, Bardo, and this has been recorded on the Tuesday night, so when it goes out Wednesday, it definitely was on the right day. Um, when he came to you with this idea, Ian, firstly, um, how, did you, how did you respond when he said, we're going to put some standard breads into a camp drafting ring? Yeah, I thought it was different, but um, yeah, no, I thought, well, why not? And since I've been riding the horse, there's no reason why um, that they can't chase cattle. Because my fellows already started to do that. There, there's a, there is actually a little bit of competition, and we might we might actually get to the, get to that at the end. But initially, from from a, like I'm a harness person, and I said this to Brett as well. I think what you guys have undertaken for from our industry is just enormous to to find a different avenue because there's lots of. Um, lots of kids show jump with them. They're actually a very good show jumper. They're obviously great for trail rides because they're very, very quiet. Pony club kids, initial and all the rest. But this is something very, very different. And I think a lot of horses will really excel at it because it's a little bit of that competitive edge, isn't it? It, it is. And I'm um, surprised like it's incredible. I think these horses will camp up pretty well. Yeah, and then uh, by all accounts, for a few of the people I've been talking to, it comes, it comes natural. Wanted to get to probably know a little bit more about you, Ian, because there's going to be plenty going on. Um, if anyone wants to go to the nutrient.com.au website, and there is actually a rehoming section there, you can find out um, Ian's got his profile up there. Brett Welsh, there's all there's five profiles, I think, up there at the minute, but updates about them. But just thought I'd find out a little bit about you. And I do know one thing, Mel, Mel alluded to, to something that you've already done, but you've been involved in horses your entire life? Yes. Yeah, started riding them when I was about three, apparently, and had 13 busters the first day and kept getting back on. <laughs> and still going. <laughs> did, did you not think, you know, maybe I'm not fit for this if you've had 13 busters in the first day? No, when I was three, I didn't know too much. So, um, yeah, it's one of those things. And, and you live uh, Riverdale. Whereabouts exactly is that? Uh, 30 k's out of Braidwood. Out of Braidwood. Yeah, called Braidwood. Yep. Not far from Canberra. Oh, okay. So be be chilly there as well. Oh, not not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Has days. And you you own a, a fair size farm, and you you've got a like a, a, a large lot of cattle. Like so, this horse Lombo Paper Talk is the horse that you've got. He actually is there one for training, but he's also working basically straight away. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No. He's just out there doing everyday work. Um, chasing cattle and mustering cattle and whatever I need to do, that's what he does. Carving heifers, um, yeah, just whatever I want to do, he, he does. He fits in, he's got a great mind, he's just a cool horse to have around. <coughs> Am I right in saying that you've you've sort of retired a little bit from what you used to do? You used to break in a lot of horses over the journey? Yes, I used to break a lot in years ago, and now I only break my own, and I've retired outside horses, so... Um, yeah, just just doing my own, and that's enough now. If you don't mind me asking, Ian, how old are you? Sixty-four. Sixty-four. You're allowed to retire. That's okay. That, that <laughs> you're going, you're going all right. Still, still do that. You still breaking your or your own. The, the the one thing when I was talking to Mel earlier on, though, and um, you know, I sort we we got to raise awareness of who you guys are, so a lot of the trotting guys can know who you are, and you know. Brett, Brett's a shy little pedal. He he sort of struggles to sell himself and, and the likes. But there'll be a lot of trotting people that actually may know you um, because over the journey you've broken in quite a few standard breads. Yes, going back you know, quite a few years ago, I, I broke a, f a few in. And, um, yes, we used to break them all with saddle as well as um, in the in the gigs, so harness. So it was yeah, different. And they wanted me to break them in ride them just so they could resell them or rehome later if they didn't, if they need to. Yeah, and, and I loved, when I read that part, I was like, that's cool. So the people that were coming to you, they actually, they wanted the horses broken in and, and then maybe, maybe have a second life. 
Is it right that you actually broke them into the saddle before you bothered putting them in the cart? Yes. Yeah, broke them into the saddle first and then, then put them into the harness after that. Did you work them on cattle at all when they were broken in? Oh, well, probably would have carved heifers and done things with them, yes. Yeah, just, just everyday riding and, yeah. Has anyone ever got you involved in a harness horse? Have you been actually owning a harness horse at all? No, no, I've never worried about owning a harness horse. I've just, yeah, just always just worked worked on, on the ones that they wanted me to. It's, it's one of those things um, I've, I've offered Mark a uh, drive, Mark Barton a drive. I reckon it'd be a bit of fun actually to put put you all in. We might even take a little bit of the yap out of Brett if we uh, put put you behind a sulky and just uh, see you just go around a track with a couple of couple of other drivers. It, it might um, might might slow a couple of years down anyway. But um, it, it is it is very different. But they're also very similar disciplines in a way, even though like on the back or driving them, they they need all the same attributes, don't they? Yes, true. Yeah, if you haven't got a, um, a good stop or a turn and and control of your horse, um, whatever you do with it, you're in trouble. Yeah, definitely. Lombo Paper Talk, he's an unraced um, horse, which I think is great because, you know, a lot of the times we see all our good horses finding new homes and, and they probably get a lot of publicity too, some of these good horses, and rightfully so because we want people to be able to take, you know, the lesser known ones and, and the likes. But this is terrific. He's an unraced um, horse. That I believe was you know an okay enough. He came from Yerby. I think he was babysitting um, uh, Lazarus for he was, he was his mate, so he used to keep hanging out with him. But that was sort of it. How has he been since he's joined you? Oh, he's been very crazy. He just um, fits in, no trouble at all. Uh, loves his food. Um, just every day, he's just a place to be around, and yeah, you know, he's just one of those good, quiet horses that you can do most things with. Now. Brett, Brett put out uh, a couple of posts early on in, in some text messages and it's probably raised the bar, I suppose, as far as competition. Now, I've got some video footage of you and it, to me it looks like you're crossing a highway, but is, am I right? That road actually runs through your property? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, up to, from Braidwood through to Cooma. But he looked like he took to it to duck the water. Now, he's a horse that didn't race, so it's not like he's got out and seen a lot of cars and things like that. So that must have been a great surprise for you straight away. It was, and, and we get a lot of log trucks and things come through here, and he doesn't worry about any of that sort of stuff, like big big machinery and that, so it's, it's good. And then these other videos um, that I've got playing over us right now, they're, they're of your property, like crossing the, the, the creek, or is it, I'm going to say it's a creek, but it, it's a river, I believe. That's a river. Yellowhaven River just in front of the house, yes, yeah. It's, and he, a, he took to all those, uh, he took to that, no worries at all? Well, I, I, I would have thought he'd been in water before the way, he just went straight across the, the, the river and, um, yeah, over the bridge and whatever he does, he just does easy. There's just, a no there's a beautiful picture of him um, cantering up the hill and uh, I, I presume it's Mel hanging onto the phone, but he just looks even a comfortable canter. Yes, no, that's true. Actually, I, I said to Mel when I finished canter, I said he's quite comfy to canter on. Like, you know, it surprised me. And uh, he canters better on his right leg lead than the left lead yet, but um, we're getting there with the left one. But yeah, no, no, he's, he's incredible. It was one of the knocks, like back to your, your breaking in days, one of the knocks that standard breads, especially the paces get, a lot of them get, is that they go pacey, if you like. Um, is there a trick, do you think, to making them canter, or is it just one of those things you just got to probably get the habit out of them a little bit and they'll, they'll come good eventually? Oh, I think they'll, they'll come good eventually. It's just, just been, been taught to um, trot for so long, and all I need to do is be just, just shown how to chill out and canter along. Yeah, and, and, and enjoy it. And, and he's been working, and, and other than that, he takes everything to, to a duck to water. Has Mel had a ride on him yet? No, no, Mel hasn't rode him yet, but um, she will before long. Yes. She, she will. But people aren't aware, if, uh, hopefully I'm hoping to be there at uh, Nutrien and doing some streaming and doing some interviews. Mel's, I believe Mel's the, um, the PA, basically, the uh, the announcer um, at the venue. Is that right? Or one yeah, of? Yeah. yeah, one of. Does a lot of announcing there and everywhere else. And um, yes, she'll definitely be there for sure. So will she be at all parochial when you're um, in the ring um, you know, competing with the other six guys? Because that, that, it's one of the great things about this. Um, all these six horses will go up for auction as, as what the whole um, 10 days is at, at Nutrien. is basically um, you work horses and a, and a vast majority of them are for sale. Um, they send, and it's going to raise money for auction to go to um, a charity. But from you guys' point of view, it's going to be very competitive, isn't it? 
I will be for sure. Now no, we we all like a bit of competitive, and um, these women are pretty tough. They're the ones that's going to step up and make us go for it. <laughs> <laughs> put the co- put the competition in. Now, I read there um, you're a very accomplished rider. I believe you may have actually won. Uh, the way I read it, it would have been the landmark back then. But you've actually won the camp draft um, at Nutrien. Yes, yeah, in 2011, I was a little bit lucky and won that one. A little, little bit lucky. Your, your your record's pretty good, isn't it, as far as some of the your titles and that you've won? Oh, it's not there. You're not too bad. You've got to, got a few. They, they, t- they told me you're going to be a tough ass. They said to me it's going to be, it's going to be hard. To, it won't be quite like Brett. Like, all I had to say to Brett was, uh, are you any good? And he just went on for half an hour. He didn't, he didn't come up for air. So <laughs> definitely a little bit more reserved than that. But so from a guy that's been around the industry for a long time um, and had a lot of horses, these horses will make drafters. They'll make working horses. There's so many more options for these standard breads going forward. Yes, and, you know, um, quiet horses for learners and things, um, yeah, like, unreal. Yeah, no, I, I really I really appreciate it. As I said, I appreciate everything you guys are doing. I think there's a lot of people in the industry that are aware of it. I think, um, you know, there'd be more and more people start to sit up. The more publicity we can get. I don't know if you actually saw. I saw Mark and Brett. They've done their own little show. They're taking me on, I think. they. Um, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a redundancy package um, sent to me very shortly, but they did a, another little interview yesterday. But Ringer Western, I think, has come on board as, as one of the sponsors too. So there's a lot of companies getting behind this, which is really good, isn't it? Yes, no, no, my word is. No, I think you'll um, keep your spot, but, um, yeah, Mark and Brett will always have a little bit of a fiddle around. Yeah, they don't mind talking them too, do they? No, no, they're both, both great talkers. <laughs> <laughs> they, definitely, they definitely are. I think Amy Cupid, I, I've got to, um, you say about the girls, I've got a couple of interviews coming up with the girls and I'm going to get Amy involved in it, which I'm really excited about. But I think what the New South Wales rehoming have done, I think it's, you know, it's terrific to think outside of the square. And, you know, people might say, oh, well, Amy's from this walk of life. I think Amy's pretty much predominantly a dressage rider. So I would imagine camp drafting hasn't been on her radar at all either. No, I just don't know her much, but um, yeah. Yeah, no. no, it's very, very good. This is going to be an ongoing interview, but don't forget the um, the rehoming standard breads at the 2022 camp draft. It'll be earlier in February. Don't worry. I'll be pumping it up. There'll be plenty going going forward. I've got a few more interviews to get uh, get done and all the rest. Ian, I really appreciate you giving me a little bit of time. Um, to, and from a harness point of, person's point of view, thank you very much for what you guys are doing it the whole lot of you um, in trying to find a, another avenue for these beautiful animals we love so much to be able to you know give them a second chance at life um, and and being still competitive I think that's you know like I said trail rides trail rides are great but um, some people want competitive I reckon some horses want comp- competitive yes that's true no, no thanks thanks to Paul and I'd also like to um, thank Mark Barton and, and um, Nutrient for the giving us a ride on one of these two thank you no i think i think you've done a great job ian thank you very much mate oh thanks paul